So my name is Alf Pingewang, um, and I'm, um, uh, I came up with the idea for Kahoot in 2006, and also one of the co-founders. I also work with the music uh, coach. Um, daily, I work at a university, Norwegian University of Science and Technology, where I both do research on game-based learning, which is related to uh, Kahoot, but also I teach. Um, today, the main focus is on teaching, so that's really important to, yes. Uh, so, uh, let's see. So, uh, now I'll uh, start um, my talk with, uh, or basically I'll just uh, give a short um, uh, presentation of what I'm going to talk about. So basically I will talk about motivation, why uh, Kahoot, can be used in the higher ed. Also, I will give a lot of practical uh, examples for how you can use Kahoot. Especially, I will demonstrate different types of questions and also emphasis of how you can ask deeper questions. Not like short questions you can answer in, within seconds, but deeper questions where students have to think. And also, we'll show how you can uh, play Kahoot over the net. Okay, so uh, to start this off, I will not do like a slide presentation. I will, of course, do a presentation in Kahoot. So um, uh, it's quite easy also to play Kahoot live um, using Zoom or other video conferences or tool. Uh, first of all, you have to make sure that you share your screen and also I recommend to share the audio. So now I'll just go to my Kahoots. One thing you get with um, premium is that you actually also get folders, which is useful. I have a lot of Kahoots, so for me, it's useful to have folders, just to organize everything. So, okay, go to webinars, and here um, is my presentation. And you can join in. Uh, I'll just play this as teach. It basically means play live using Zoom. And it's just like playing any ordinary uh, Kahoot in the classroom. So let's go, okay. So, yeah, there's also another thing, feature we have now. You can also choose different lobby music. I will do jungle today, just to have a different mood. So now, hopefully you can see the screen and you can join. Okay, one thing, if you want to use or share the computer screen, it's also important that you turn the volume all the way down. At least in Zoom, uh, then you can have, it's possible to talk on top of the audio, it should be. Okay, I probably will not um, be able to wait for all of you to log in, but um, you can join in later if you are not able to join in during the login. The game pin will be available at the left lower corner. To log in, you go to kahoot.it uh, on a web browser, or you can use the Kahoot app, and you just enter the game pin and then a nickname. So, yeah, nice to see someone here. <laughs> All right, one thing I would just want to mention while you're logging in, uh, I get a lot of questions about do you actually learn anything from playing Kahoot or just use playing Kahoot? And my answer is, of course, yes. Learn. Uh, first of all, it's a great tool to review uh, knowledge, but also I find that you can do a lot of teaching in between the questions. So for me, it's important to have sufficient time between the questions. For instance, if I see my students, all my students are answering incorrectly in the first, uh, on the first question, I spend some time explaining why, uh, yeah, and explain basically how this should be or what's the correct answer. That's also important. Okay, <laughs> a lot of people logging into this code, so it's exciting to see. Yeah, we'll just wait a couple more, more seconds and then we'll just start. Okay. Right. Okay, I've turned down the music a bit more, so hopefully it's easier to, to hear now. Okay, we'll just start. All right. 
So, okay, the first question, research studies on the use of commuting higher education show the commute has positive effect on what? So this is what I call a uh, Winnie the Pooh question, where all the answers are actually incorrect. Um, I have conducted a larger um, uh, literature review on a lot of almost every research study on uh, Kahoot or use of Kahoot in learning. And um, this study showed that um, Kahoot has a positive effect on learning performance, classroom dynamics, students' attitudes like motivation, engagement, um, and also, um, actually, I was a bit surprised, but also uh, it's improved the student anxiety, which I, I thought was a bit surprising. Uh, we'll give a link to that study if you're interested to see the results. Okay, LB is in the lead, Antonella, Dan, Sidi, Karine, Karine, yeah. Nati. Okay, let's go to the next one. Why should Kahoot be used in higher ed? Do you think? Yes, so um, Kahoot should be used. First of all, it's a great tool to increase student motivation and engagement. Uh, when I came up with the idea for Kahoot, I was teaching about 500 students in a large IT introductory course at my university. Uh, and it was really hard to engage the students. It was impossible to have any direct uh, kind of chat with students or discussions. Uh, and hard to interact and hard to know if they actually learn anything. So uh, I was thinking if, if there was a way to uh, engage the students at the same time, uh, know what they were learning. Also, the students have said that it's really useful to know if they understood the teacher, to get an acknowledgement on their understanding. And for me also, it's great as a lecturer to know uh, that Sometimes I see that something I teach when I run a Kahoot adverts, I see they didn't understand what I was teaching. So then I have to change uh, my slides or change the way I'm teaching as well. So it's a great feedback to improve on teaching as well. Okay. AFSMW is in the lead. All right. Okay. Um, how can students play Kahoot in higher ed, do you think? Another Winnie the Pooh question where all the answers are correct. So you can play it live in the classroom or like we do now through a video conference system like Zoom. Also, it's possible to play Kahoot alone using a mobile app. Uh, another way of playing Kahoot, I will demonstrate this afterwards, is that the students can compete against each other uh, at different times. Um, so I will show that later. But also, you, students can play in their own tempo without the timing. And the, the points are not giving related to time. All right. A, F, S, M, W is still in the lead. Uh, here's a poll. Do any of your courses uh, include a student project where the results are presented at the end of the semester? So no points are given here. <laughs> Just a poll. Thank you. 
So you can actually do both polling and play kind of quiz questions in the code at the same time. So a lot of you, 70% say that you have some kind of student project where the results should be presented at the end of the semester. So I teach a course um, in software architecture and uh, I got, like five years ago, um, or the project is basically the students uh, should, uh, as students of six or groups of six students should uh, develop uh, a, a smartphone game, multiplayer game. And at the end of the semester, they should give a presentation about this. So previous years I had, um, had them do uh, like PowerPoint presentations. And since there are 30 groups, I picked some of these groups to do presentations. And it's kind of quite boring actually. So what I've done the last five years is basically I have asked the students to produce a YouTube video, maximum two minutes. And then I put all these YouTube videos in a Kahoot and the, the fellow students can give feedback on the projects using this YouTube video. Um, I will just demonstrate how that looks. So it has been so much better. Basically what I do, I invite all the students to the lecture hall. I get some popcorn and soda and they have a great time watching all these YouTube videos. Okay, so now first you will see a video from one of the projects. Just, yeah. When we set out to create a multiplayer game, we wanted to make sure it was something we really wanted for ourselves. Our favorite iPhone game is 2048, but after playing it for a while, it feels uh, lonely. So we decided to reinvent it by adding another dimension. And today, we're introducing 2048 Multiplayer. Soon, you'll be able to download it from the App Store, create an account, and challenge all of your friends, no matter where they are in the world. Players take turns moving tiles, and the person who has the most amount of points when the game is over, wins. Because our primary focus was on modifiability, we've made sure the game is so flexible, it almost feels personal. You can play lightning rounds where each player only has three seconds to make a move or longer games where strategy is more important than speed. You can decide how large the game board is going to be or how the tiles are going to look. And because we know you'll love it, we've made it available on all your iOS devices even the iPad. We hope that you will have as much fun playing it as we did building it. All right, so that was the video one of the groups produced and it was kind of a parody of an Apple ad, which is a bit cool. So now if you have been my students, the next thing is for you to give some feedback on this uh, video, okay? So now you should give some feedback. So basically I use a poll, please rate this presentation. And then you can choose between different smileys, your feedback. So most of you thought it was pretty good. Uh, I will actually, after I will demonstrate how you can put kind of these smiles into the answers as well. Okay, uh, and then also uh, this year I'll add one extra dimension to this using poll. I'll also use what's called word cloud. So now we can, what do you think of this about this presentation? Just give your a keyword or some, some feedback. You can type anything.
not sure how well this scales. <laughs> okay, let's see. Fun, very fun, cool, interesting, great, good, awesome, informative, engaging, and so on. So um, by doing this, um, the students uh, get a really snappy, short presentation, and they also get feedback on their presentation. And it's, it's a much more engaging way of doing uh, uh, presentational projects. Uh, I will show you now, demonstrate how you can actually create these uh, codes as well. Okay, let's see who won. <laughs> Third place, Zach. On second place, Katie did, or, yeah, I, and AFSM. Yes. Congratulations. Um, now I will demonstrate how you actually can create these kind of questions and also other questions that are more complicated. I'll just make this up. So um, I'll go back to Kahoot. Uh, so in Kahoot, uh, first of all, before I demonstrate how you can use a lot of different question types and uh, create uh, Kahoot, I will also show you that you can use Discover. If you're teaching some subjects, you should always check if there are any Kahoots that you can use that have been produced before. Uh, and there are about 60 million public Kahoots available. So it's likely you can find something. For me, uh, for instance, I'm teaching uh, the programming language Python. So I can just Google or search for Python programming. Okay, let's see what I get. Okay, there are a lot of Python uh, programming um, cahoots. And you can also take a look specifically on the questions, all the answers. So it's a super easy way to find um, cahoots that are ready. And you can also modify them to, the, to your own purposes if you, if you want. I'll also show another way you can do this. You can search through subjects, so maybe science and chemistry. Uh, then you kind of limit the search, but you can, okay, I will look for, um, let's see, uh, okay, intermolecular, spell check somehow, molecular, uh, oops, forces, oops. Hmm. Enter courses. Yeah, and you get a lot of them. So the first thing, basically, if you teach some subject, you can see if there are any that you can use. You can take a look at them. Okay, this looks nice. And if you, you can play it as it is, but you can also modify it if you want to make some changes. And the way of doing this is to, to uh, duplicate it. To duplicate basically means that you create your own copy and then you can edit and make changes of the questions and everything. So that's cool. Okay, now I will uh, demonstrate how some of the, the premium features you have in Kahoot and how you can ask deeper questions. So I'll just go into one of my folders, demo, and English. I'll create a new Kahoot here. So great. The first thing, yeah, uh, you can use templates. There are already templates with, uh, where you have questions, or you can change kind of the questions. But I will just create a new one from scratch. Okay, uh, the first thing I usually do is to change the title on my Kahoot. So, okay, I will call this one for um, Kahoot Webinar Demo. Okay. And uh, you can also add a description. This is to make it easier for others to search for. Uh, a demonstration of features, oops, features in Kahoot. Um, the also stuff you can do, you can also, for instance, pick a different style of music. Okay, I'll choose uh, reggae, maybe. 
Uh, another thing you get in premium is uh, you get access to Getty images. So if you want to change the cover image of this script, you can go to image library. And for instance, you can search millions of royalty free images. So I get demo, Let's see what, uh, this is not the kind of demo I wanted. Okay, I'll put tech demo, tech demo. Yes, okay, I like this one. So it's quite easy to do this. You can also change language if you teach in another language, of course. This is only for searching or classifying uh, the code. Okay, um, one quick way of create a code is basically to use question bank, which is super useful. So um, the, the examples I will give is from my own domain, but I think it can be applicable for other domains. So uh, for computer science, uh, for instance, let's say I, I want to have a um, Kahoot about uh, the internet. So I can ask, for instance, when did the internet start? And then you just search for questions. Okay, I found one question here. When did the internet start? 1990. Nice illustration. Yeah, it looks nice. And I can just click add. And now I have the question answers and everything. The illustration even. So it's, this is a super quick way of, of making hoots um, because there are so many questions that you can uh, just find the right question. If, if you have, if you, if, if you have kind of some general questions that have been asked before, you can find uh, already questions with answers. So it's a super easy way to do this. Another thing you get in premium is actually to use slides. Slides is kind of, um, you can have slides almost like in PowerPoint, but you can also have video. Um, if you want to have slides like uh, PowerPoint, the way you should do this is probably just export the slide from PowerPoint to an image and you can upload the image. Right now, I want to uh, add a YouTube video here. Um, so I have one YouTube video here. What is the internet? So what you can do then is just to copy this URL. And then I go to my food creator, go to the YouTube link, and then I paste the link. I get the preview. And you can also change the video start and end. Um, okay, I'll just add this one. And then I can ask my students to watch this video. So that's one thing you can do also with premium. Another thing which is cool um, is the puzzle type of questions. And now I want to demonstrate how to make a quite complicated puzzle question. A puzzle question is basically you have four answers and they have to be answered. They have you have to organize them in the right sequence. So first, the students have to put this answer first, and then the second, and the third, and the fourth. So that's kind of the uh, the starting point for this. Now, I'm, there's one way of making quite complicated uh, questions. You can make um, an, an image. Uh, where you should map, for instance, a description of some terms or some words to these answers. So I have already made an image, so I'll just upload an image I have on the, my desktop example. I made this image in PowerPoint, by the way. So internet terms, okay. So here you can see the image through, let's see. Yeah, so it's the four descriptions. One is, yeah, a computer, that is used to transfer data on the internet. Uh, and the, the term for this description is a host. So put a host here to map the first one, first answer. And second, transfer data from your computer to another computer. That's to upload. The third one, a large database of domain names and their corresponding internet access, this DNS or domain name server. And the last one, transfer data from Another computer to your computer that's down low. And then you need kind of a question top here. Um, 
map the terms to the descriptions. Yeah. So in this way, you can make, the students really have to think, it takes some time to answer this, and you can kind of, uh, they have to map four descriptions to uh, these terms. And when they play, these uh, four answers will be shuffled, so they have to figure out uh, to organize them. And this, this type of question takes more time, so I, I will give them 2,000 points. Afterwards, we'll see how this looks while playing. Okay, another type of question you can have is an open ended question. This means that there are no given answers, they have to type the answer themselves. So, okay, I will. And you can also make this question quite complicated. This is also from my domain. So for instance, what is the binary number 10101110 converted to decimal? And if you're, some maybe know this answer without uh, any computations that most students have to do some calculation, maybe on pen and paper. Um, and the right answer should be, uh, 174, and then the students actually have to type in this number, so they can't just choose between different answers. Um, I also like to have uh, illustrations, so I just search for, okay, this is just some search, search suggestions here, binary, let's see what, okay, this is quite nice. I'll just add this illustration. I always like to have illustrations because it makes the question looks nice. I'm going to look nicer. Okay, I will also show a more complicated quiz question. So this is an ordinary quiz question. Um, so um, in my domain, uh, I, I teach introductory course in Python programming, uh, but you can use the same method for math and physics and chemistry uh, to do more complicated questions. So in my Typical question could be, I use this many times. So uh, what, oops, what will be printed to the console if this code of Python is executed? So you can use the picture to show some uh, code or some formulas or some, uh, yeah, can be a lot of different things, uh, a case, uh, that you have to figure out some solution to. So I just made uh, this code in also in uh, PowerPoint and exported it as an image, so programming. So here you can see the Python program, and then they have to figure out what is the right one and trace this uh, question. Okay, so uh, give some alternatives. Why? Maybe the answer is two, maybe it's minus five, maybe it's minus one. Or maybe it's zero division error division by zero. Yeah, the right answer is minus one. It's if you don't know program, this is quite hard. Since it takes some time to answer, this is not like a 20 second question. So you should add more time, at least 60 seconds, I think. Maybe you can also add 90 if you want. I can have 90 here. This is also true for the other ones. For possibly you automatically get 60 seconds, that may be okay, but you have to make sure that the, the students have enough fun. And also I'll give more points because they're harder questions. Okay, I will have another uh, question type I'll demonstrate, and that's the poll. Uh, the poll is not giving any points, but you can use it for different purposes. So um, you can, um, use it for to spark discussions. So I've used this question in my class. Is it wrong to download uh, movies, music, oops, music, or games without paying the creators of the content? But basically to piracy <laughs> or to illegally download music. Um, so, yeah. uh, and usually these kind of questions sparks some uh, 
controversial um, discussions. And it's easier, for instance, if they know that they're not the only one that maybe think this is okay or, yeah. So um, you can have different answers here. For instance, no, I think it's okay. Or you can have no, but I do it anyway, or maybe, but they earn so much money that it does not matter. Or maybe, yes, I think it's wrong. And always I add uh, a picture. So maybe the question, let's see if I can find an illustrated question. I like this one. So, so is it wrong to do, to, to download, sorry, download movies and so on. Uh, so it's perfect for these kind of uh, polls, but you can also use it to get feedback on your teaching, a lot of different things. So this is not related to points. And you can also add them also into ordinary codes if you want. Another one that I have shown you before is Word Cloud, uh, where you can type anything. These can also be used uh, for different purposes. Uh, here's one example. What associations do you get from the word privacy, for instance? So here the students can give any association just to get kind of the mind of the students and also to give some, uh, so give them a voice to what they're thinking. I can also want to add uh, an illustration question and see if I have another one. Kind of like this one. All right, cool. Hope you learned something from this demonstration on the webinar. Uh, I will just add one more question before I demonstrate how you can actually play this in the classroom. So um, another thing that we just added, uh, it's just, uh, I think, at least less than a month ago, is that you can actually have pictures in the answers. Uh, and you're, maybe you're thinking, okay, this is just for kindergarten, uh, but actually it can also be relevant for higher education. So this may be more high school um, topic, but if I have a question like, what is the quadratic formula? And then uh, you want to have different formulas where the students can uh, choose between. I just Googled <laughs> and find, found some images of different formulas on, on the internet. So I'll just download them to a folder. So I'll just upload an image on my desktop. I have, let's see, desktop, I have a, a folder here. So here's one formula, it's just a picture of acceleration from physics. Okay, so instead of typing, you just click this icon for uh, add image. I upload another one for gravity. Okay, it looks like this. I upload another image for frequency, frequency tension relationship, also physics. And another one, which should be the correct answer, quadratic formula. There you go. And this is the correct answer. So in this way, you can have different you know, things. You can have like uh, physics formulas, but it can also be math. It can be chemistry or you can have flags or a lot of different things here. So it's just your imagination. I always like to have um, kind of, uh, some image illustrations. So I just type in formula, let's see. Oh, okay. Uh, this one looks nice. All right. So now I have, I'm ready. I made some different types of questions. And now I just want to show you how you can use this Kahoot um, in different ways.
how you can play it. Um, I just click on done. I guess I'm done with this uh, code. Oh no, I get, okay, this code can't be played. Hmm, okay. There are some issues. Okay, I want to fix them. No worries. <laughs> it was planned. Okay. So here you can see I have a question in the beginning. I didn't actually fill out anything in this question. So I'll just delete this question. So here you have symbol for delete because I don't need an additional question. I'll delete this question. Another thing which is really useful, if you have similar kind of question, maybe I want to translate other binary numbers uh, to decimal, you can also use duplicate. If you click on duplicate, you make a copy. And then you can change it, for instance, to 01011, or I could do 11. That should be four, I think, five, no, oh, three. So it, it's possible to, um, to uh, duplicate, uh, to produce similar questions. Okay, now I click done. Yep, so it's ready. So now I will show you another way of playing this code. Now this code here is here. Um, especially now when you can't meet or uh, face the students, uh, uh, physically uh, or directly, you can also play in two different ways at least. So one way is actually to sign a challenge. Uh, this means that the students can play uh, on whenever they want to play, but they still compete against each other. So we'll just see what that looks like. So I just click on assign. This was what we played uh, the first code, which was live um, type of game. Okay, so I click on assign. And here you can see, uh, you can assign a challenge. And you have to set like a date for when the challenge should be finished. So, okay, I'll say uh, the students have to finish this challenge for maybe next Wednesday at uh, 11 p.m. Question timer is basically if you want the students to uh, get more points if they answer quickly. If you turn it off, you'll get 1,000 points for a correct answer. I'll just keep it on. You can also randomize the answer order, which can be nice. Also, you can add a friendly nickname generator so to avoid uh, some naughty nicknames. So I'll just create this challenge. And when I um, create this challenge, you can't, the students can't access it directly. So to make or to um, give this challenge to the students, you have to either uh, use this link, send them this link using the learning management system, share it in somewhere or email or anything, or you can also share this game pin. And you know it is a challenge if it starts with a zero. So the game pin with challenge starts with a zero. So I can just show you what this looks like for a student. So if I copy this one, you can also share in Google Classroom, Microsoft Teams and so on, bring mine. I copied this link now, and we'll open another tab. And now I just open this link. This is what the student will see. Okay. So, oh, <laughs> there's someone actually that I've played. So that's cool. So um, quick webinar demo. Nine questions. All right, I'll just enter my name, Dr. Kahoot. Okay, go. So this is slightly different from playing an ordinary code because now you can actually use your screen and answer directly. So when did the internet start? So, okay, I think it was 1990. And then you can just click on the right answer. So you don't need two devices for playing challenges, just use one device, also on a computer, which is nice. Okay, I get, get, got 850 points, let's see. I'm not in the first place, all right. But here you can see 
as long as there have been some other classmates that have played, I compete against them. Okay, all right, next question. And this was actually the YouTube video. So then you can see the YouTube video on this internet. You will not see the whole video, but this can be a nice if you want to, the to, to the see something. Is like see something specific? Okay, this is the puzzle. Twice as many points. Map the terms to the descriptions. Okay. A computer host of the first form term was host, I think. Transfer from you that was upload. And then DNS was the third one and download. Of course, for a student, this should take more time if they don't know the terms. Okay. Wait. That's great. Awesome. All right. Yay, I'm second place. That's, that's great. Okay, open end question. What is the binary number on a lot of ones and zeros converted to decimal? Well, I think it was 170 something, maybe 179. Let's see. No, that was incorrect. Okay, the right answer should be 174. I actually knew that, but uh, I just wanted to answer it incorrectly. All right. I guess I'm moving down the top five. All right. Another open ended. Oh, that's the second question. Uh, What's well, one one converted to decimal? Okay, I know this could be three. Yes, that's correct. Awesome. All right. Another quiz question. Twice as many points. What will be printed to the console if this code in Python is executed? So it looks like this. You can see the code. And the right answer, I know it's minus one. Yes, that's correct. This looks okay. And the poll, is it wrong to download movies without paying the creators or content? Uh, yeah, I would say yes. Yeah. You see, no. <laughs> Most of you got to know. And then you can see 14% uh, no, but uh, good anyway. And yes was only 14%. Okay. Under the word cloud, what association do you get from the word privacy? Uh, extra words. If you produce software, it's usually with the word. Let's see. Content, hot, privilege, secret, private, good. Yeah. So you can see you can get a lot of different impressions. And the final quiz question. All right. So what is the quadratic formula? I know it was this one. That is correct. Yeah. So in this way, you can have the students to play um, a Kahoot. They don't have to play at the same time. They can do it whenever they want. But still, they will have a fun time competing. But, all right. So this is one way of doing this. Uh, you can also just leave this one. Um, another way is to use the game pin. I'll just show, I will not play through the game, the game pin. I'll just open another window. To use the game pin, you to just go to the root of it. And you enter the game pin. And then you can see you launch the channel. This is a great way of playing Kahoot yeah, these times when you don't, you can't do it in classrooms. Yeah. And of course, another way of doing this is to just play as an ordinary. If you go back to Kahoot, uh, it was in, no, shoot. it was on, let's see, go back to demo. English, then Kahoot webinar demo. You can also play using Zoom live. That's the, that's the other option. I'll just show one more thing, uh, which is really useful, reports. So if you go to reports, uh, so if you wonder where is my challenge, I have started a challenge, I don't know where it is. 
you can go to reports and then you'll find here's all my ongoing challenges. So um, here is the Kahoot webinar demo challenge. So if I click here, I'll find, find the challenge. I have the link here and also the game pin. So then I can share it to more students. So it's always there on reports. And also you can see the students, the progress of the students here. Another way you can find um, this challenge is if you go to your Kahoot directly. So now it's in demo, it's in English. And, and I open this, I click on this uh, Kahoot. And here you can see, you also uh, can see there's a challenge in progress, view the challenge info. 19 that are playing play this challenge. So you can go here and you have this, all this information. Uh, another thing, when you finish the challenge, you can get a different type of report. So I will just show a report from some um, finished, uh, I think, I think actually was played live before the coronavirus, but let's see one of the courses I have, for instance, this one. So here um, you get some uh, information about this. Uh, for instance, you get 67% okay, accuracy of the students. Two of my students didn't finish. Two need help. And there's one identified difficult question. So here you can see all of the students. And also you can identify who needs help. I think this person didn't answer any of the questions, but uh, maybe this one needs some help. And also you can see the different questions, how they answered. So only 28% answered correctly this one, and they used 4.7 seconds giving on average to give the answers. You can show all the different questions, how correctly they answered. And you can also show the difficult questions. So this question was really difficult. Less than one third of the students got it correctly. So then I know as a teacher, I have to teach this this part of the syllabus better next time because they don't get it. You can also take a look at how the different students have um, played through the game, scored. Uh, another thing you can do is to make a print preview, like a report. Then you get this nice report you can use. You can also, yeah. Uh, and finally, there's one more thing you can do, which is really cool as well. You can also, download this information uh, in Excel spreadsheet as well. Okay. okay, that was everything I wanted to say. So thank you so much for participating. I hope you learned something. Thank you so much for attending. It has been great. Uh, I hope you learned something and have a happy Easter to all of you.